Hello traders, welcome to the weekly Outlook and Setups, volume 214, Ile here, and as usual, we're gonna have a look at the market, how it developed this week, what kind of opportunities we had, and most importantly, what we can expect for the upcoming week. Now, this week was once again very tough, very tricky, it is another losing week, well, the previous one was not a losing, but this one is definitely a losing week for me, and the majority of my losses were taken on the indices, trying to really kind of decide on the direction, and... Uh, Everything is so uncertain. We had a speech from Powell that was also quite uncertain regarding the interest rates of America. So are they going to be hiking it? Are they going to be keeping it the same? And with the conflicts going on between Palestine um, and Israel, uh, it is just getting way tough and uncertain. So once again, as I keep saying, you got to know when to trade and when not to trade. And my mistake pretty much this week was to try to force some trades uh, in during very high uncertainty and uh, yeah pretty much that resulted in taking a couple of losses but of course we still have uh, one last week of October or maybe one and a half so let's try to finish it strong so without further ado make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notification bells because I'm gonna be uh, publishing a brand new educational video next week and if you already did that let's head into the video All right, before we jump into the technicals and having a look at the Dixie, let's just have a quick glance at the news. So we do have once again a lot of news next week and I'm starting to hate it because it's getting too much. All the news, all the uncertainty, all the choppy price action and it's, it's just crazy. Like since two, three weeks, it has been one of my toughest periods, honestly. Like this year, this has been the toughest periods that I'm trading into. Uh, like I usually have like seven to eight losing streaks like losses in the road and I take like a win or two and then again a losing streak like for example this week right last week I managed to cover everything on Friday with a good trade but then this week it's all losses I think I took around five to six losses and um, I'm not gonna share them because there is not a lot any value to actually gain from that so when we when it comes to the news on Tuesday we have a lot of these composite manufacturing and services PMI for the whole eurozone then we have the same for the pound and then we have the same for the US. So Tuesday could definitely be volatile all day. Wednesday we have interest rate for Canada and then we have CPI for the Aussie. That could definitely bring some volume to the Aussies. Then Thursday we have the big boys, ECB, monetary policy statement, of course interest rates. And then we have the press conference. So that is going to be very important to actually have a look what is happening within Europe. So very important once again on Thursday. And then on Friday we're going to be ending with some... Um, Core personal consumption expenditures right there for the US, uh, another very important measure of inflation as well, personal spending, and uh, we have a summit right there by the EU leaders all day. So yeah, I'm very sad to say because I always start every week with a lot of optimism and uh, really looking forward to a very clear week. But again, since like, yeah, pretty much since four weeks right there, it has been tough. So Dixie, well, this week you can see inside bar. So nothing, yeah, this is Monday 16th. Yeah, this is pretty much when the news is, uh, when the new week is gonna open because I'm doing this video on Sunday instead of Saturday. So uh, yeah, we have four weeks at the top right there doing absolutely nothing. So inside bar this week, so are we gonna start pushing lower? Are we gonna continue pushing higher? Again, I am just afraid to give any sort of outlooks because it's just chopping around and we get no clues overall. Like the... The good thing about the Dixie is that we're having a break of structure on the daily to the downside. But again, that does not mean nothing. So the market broke it down. And of course, then this turns into our potential daily lower high. The market pulls back very sharply. But then this week, you can see absolutely nothing. So why would I try to force it this week? And probably you guys did as well. Probably a lot of you are having your toughest, toughest uh, periods right now. Because again, like a lot of us are having a tough period, maybe some other guys are maybe having a lot of wins. It really depends on how you trade and like what kind of strategies you use and then this sort of stuff. But again, just keep showing up and don't let a losing streak distract you. Now, on the forward time frame, we had a bullish shift here. We have another break of structure here as well. This is where the DXY aligned bearish. There we have here another break of structure lower. And this is where it gets tricky, right? Monday made this break lower, lower high lower low then wick down wick back up and then wick down and right now what the hell is happening so according to me this is the last structure break but again is it a structure break is it a liquidity gap we just don't know and just looking at how the market looks like right now uh, it is it is just nonsense like is it bullish is it bearish well daily looks like it's bearish 
but I really don't like this break because we just broke and we massively expanded higher. I ran out of all the time frame, like made lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, right there with a wick. Aligned bullish right here. But then instead of holding and going long, it actually came in and took out the low. So technically, that's my lower high, that's my lower low. And this is potentially where we should be going when it comes to structure. But once again, as I said, I'm just not confident at all to be calling any outlooks right now and any scenarios because it's just like nothing happens. So currently, if I am to say something well I would say something like this could be good but of course the market can do something completely different if the DXY is gonna go short we could also have some sort of a pullback and then a continuation lower towards the hourly low but again based on structure this should be the weak low that should be taken but again there is no shoots there is no needs to the market right now does whatever it wants so again just flow with the markets Daily is bearish, weekly is absolutely bullish. The question is, are we going to be starting any sort of pullback? Well, in order to start that pullback, we need some sort of a catalyst. Uh, but Mr. Powell came in last week and he was so mysterious and uncertain. Like, depending on the situation, we're going to act accordingly. So he kind of hinted to a interest rate hike, which is going to be bullish for the Dixie. But he also at the same time did not, right? And if you actually go to have a look at the of, of his speech's price action... It was so uncertain. It went down, it went up, and then it went down. So there was no clear sign. And then the market chopped up for another whole day. So again, guys, just very uncertain times right now. Wait for clear price action. And again, don't throw any kind of biases in directions because anything could happen. Your USD this week, luckily, it did not provide a lot of actual setups, which of course uh, definitely saved me some losses because I only took one loss on EU and it was very early during the week. Now, again, similar to the DXY, we're sitting at a weekly lower low. Again, a lot of liquidity is taken to the left. So are we going to start pulling back on the weekly? Well, again, we do need some sort of a catalyst. And I do believe just to remind you that we're having a lot of euro news next week. So next week, we're starting with uh, these uh, services, manufacturing and composite PMIs. And then on Thursday, we have the ECB uh, press conference and, of course, the monetary policy decision. So that is going to be very huge for the euro and hopefully then it's going to give us some clues about what is going on. Now, so far, once again, there is that confusion between the daily and the foliage because similar to the Dixie, the daily shifted bullish. That was the daily higher low and you can see the market actually pulled back. And right now it looks like it wants to make a new daily break. So again, like I try to listen to the higher time frames. Uh, but again, when it comes to how the lower time frames are looking like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's tricky. So we came in right there and we caused a hourly structure break lower, but then we came up there and we caused a hourly break of structure higher. So right now, similar to the DXY, uh, I would take a range like that. This is my hourly low. That is my hourly high. There is my PD range. And right now the market is just uh, lingering in the middle. So again, a lot of things could happen on the open. We could start bearish, and if we start bearish, I will be focusing on, on longs. If we start bullish and break structure, then of course, maybe pullbacks and targeting that daily high. And then of course, if we take the daily high, then it's all about adapting. So is it going to continue to push above it, or is it going to initiate the daily pullback? I don't know. So currently, those are my two scenarios for the euro. I am more bullish than I am bearish. However, I would once again refrain from giving any outlooks, because with the interest rates coming in, with all the euro news coming in next week, uh, it's much better to just be very, very conservative. Just wait for the market to show you what it wants to do and only strike if you get a very clear setup. So that's the euro. The only thing I'm going to say is that it's more bullish than bearish. But of course, we need a proper setup. Euro yen, very nice uh, engulfing candle actually on the weekly time frame. So that gives us a lot of bullish signs potentially. Now on the daily time frame, you can see the overall daily price action. It is very compressed it is not very nice uh, but still if you carefully look at it there was that most recent daily break of structure to the upside and right now we are making another potential daily break to the upside and uh depends on where you're going to be taking your daily higher low so is it going to be this or is it going to be that little guy but what i'm going to say is that the daily is bullish and then of course potentially the next liquidity target the only liquidity target we have left is this one but again is Euro JPY actually going to persist being bullish? We don't know. So there is that daily break. The market pulled back, respected for the um, order flow and demand zone, pushed up higher high. So there is the last hourly break. 
and uh, here we no, we don't have any sort of a break so if i just remove this daily level again keep in mind that there is a very strong daily zone i can maybe take it like this but currently the most recent hourly demand zone is this so that is your daily and that is your hourly. so again make sure to put in some annotations right there uh, two outcomes once again if the market star is bearish and taps inside somewhere right there i'm going to be looking for long star getting the hourly high high if the market opens bullish and breaks structure then i will be looking for a retest and a potential continuation but then if the euro decides to get weak because of the news you might have a trend change on the foh and then of course you can start going short so those are the three outcomes that i see and once again even with outcomes the market opens and does something random so once again flow with the markets flow with the structure and let's see what's going on but looking at the euro usd it has a very bullish outlook euro jpy is also picking up a little bit of bullish steam so i would say longs on the euro but big news are ahead of us so let's not get our hopes very high let's have a look at aussie dollar so we're having an overall inside bar weekly candle that stayed within the previous weekly candles high and low and most probably next week we're going to have a bearish week because it just looks very good for shorts and the bias is shorts and we had this week a sort of a pullback to potentially grab some liquidity and right now we could be headed lower towards breaking this daily low and hourly low so as you can see on the daily we have a daily break of structure the market pulled back all the way up to the daily lower high melted but then it pulled back to fill in the imbalance that was left and right now it well again i really don't want to use this language but it really makes sense and the market should be pushing towards this fourly low but again we never know we also have a lot of important news on wednesday so we have cpi on wednesday for the aussie paired with some other aussie news so again watch out for that uh the tricky part on the aussie just to remind you is that we're still trading in a very big internal range so that is your hourly and daily high and hourly and daily low everything right there is internal as you can see internal breakup internal breakdown internal breakdown internal breakup up up down right and then we pull back lower high and right now it looks like you want to drop however look at the positioning of price right now so it can do a lot of stuff i mean right now once again you should not be really looking to trade if you're not above the 50 percent on that big hourly range right the market came in once then it came in twice and right now it should be dropping so if you manage to catch some sort of shorts before the market breaks the hourly low then great Again, the market can just open and break it. And then from there, potentially pull back. I don't know. If the market opens bullish, then once again, it's most likely going to seek some sort of liquidity. So it's going to be this high, it's going to be that high. And then, of course, if you get a, a lower time frame alignment, so for example, from here, from that exact zone, right there, as the market went above the 50%, right here, took out the Asian high and aligned bearish on the 50 minute, there is your absolutely textbook short right there because there is your trend change there is your zone right there and then there is your beautiful short right so setups like this are the ones that have to be taken okay you can see on tuesday during my outlook absolute madness but then wednesday it was the day that provided on the aussie so if you're trading the aussie definitely should have showed up on wednesday so right now again the bias is bearish we potentially should be taking out the following low and after we take out the low then of course we have to flow so let's see what happens on monday and talk to you on tuesday let's have a quick look at aj so aj is still bullish on the weekly time frame just to remind you and right now we're trading in the premium zone of the weekly time frame so are we going to be going lower are we going to be going higher to make a new weekly higher high well i don't know because looking at this potential higher low the market tried to push and it failed so again respectively i have marked this one as a potential weak low and then of course on the daily time frame after being stuck in this very big range for eternity we went out of it exactly right there we went out of it and then we aligned bearish again we pull back lower high and right now we are once again chopping inside a very big range for yeah for around two weeks right now then of course dropping onto the fall time frame what you should know is that similar to the aussie usd that's the fall in daily high and that's the fall in daily low so everything inside here is internal and this is why when you have a very big range like this it is not very good to trade because you get chopped around all of this internal price action but of course, if you are trading on the intraday timeframes, like the 50 minute and the 30 minute, the bias is short. So if you manage to get any shorts, then of course, that is going to be good. And once again, I have no clue how it's going to play out and what is going to happen. The only thing I can say is that we are inside this range. And if we manage to get any intraday shorts, 
Again, similar to what I showed you on the Aussie USD on, on Wednesday. The market came up, went above the 50%, took out the Asian high liquidity, aligned bearish on the 15 minute, and then you take your short, right? But then you can see Thursday and Friday, complete choppedness. So again, currently being in a very tough position. I don't know what is going to happen because it can just continue to drop lower like that. It can maybe decide to like pull back to grab some sort of liquidity, maybe even tap inside the zone. Who knows? But again, let's allow it to do its thing and let's see what is going to happen. So again, we got a flow. As I've been telling you for a few weeks, the price action of the NZDs actually looks uh, a little bit weaker than the Aussies. And you can see here we're already having a weekly structure break formation. So definitely we're having a bearish market right there. Now the daily time frame, you can see like all the pairs, most of the pairs, not to say all, they end up chopping around. But the NZD this week was rather bearish. So this is why what I think is uh, we all should also learn how to do is to really learn about macroeconomics, right? And pretty much the fundamentals. Because, for example, right now, the euro and the indices are a complete massacre. But if you actually know that, for example, the NZD is a weak currency because of X and Y, then you go and you trade the NZD. And like here, we're having a nice, beautiful downtrend. Probably lower low, pulls back lower high, massive dump lower, lower high, another dump lower, right? So this one was actually clear. So currently, that is not a forward break. So we're trading between this forward higher low, which is staying within the daily, uh, sorry, uh, forward lower high, which is staying within the daily lower high, right? And uh, right now, we are most likely about to be making a forward break of structure lower. Now, I see a lot of outcomes on this one once again. Like we can start bullish, pull back and then go short from here. We can start bearish and then pull back and continue going lower. Or we can start bearish, align bullish on the foyage to pull us back on the daily. And then from here, align bearish from the daily on the foyage, right? And then potentially continue going down with the daily structure. So those are the three outcomes I see. I know there are a lot, but this is uh, what my mind tells me that could happen. But of course, there could be a fourth one that I'm missing. Who knows? So that is the NZD, definitely more bearish than bullish, which once again, like a bearish Aussie and a bearish NZD does not really uh, reflect and align with the bullish euro I have and the bearish DXY. So let's see again, the Aussie and the NZD are not included in the, um, in the DXY. So they don't really have a correlation to the euro. But usually once again, if euro USD goes up, Aussie and NZD USD should be going up. But again, right now there is absolutely no correlation. So again, Focus on the market you're trading and don't look at correlation and just focus on the structure. We can also see that the NZD JPY is also rather bearish in the last two weeks. So very nice bearish candle right there last week. And this one is a very nice continuation, even though the weekly time frame is bullish. So from a weekly higher low to a weekly higher high, right now we're most likely pulling back below the 50%. Yes, we are. So what is going to be happening from that area? Well, of course, we are going to see. Now, the daily time frame also aligned bearish. Well, now it, it was actually bearish from here. So daily alignment, that was the daily lower high. And the market came in, tapped inside. And right now we should be targeting this daily lower low, which is very, very, very close. Like, why didn't it take it? I don't know. So definitely bearish on the daily. We have a clear target objective of this lower low. And right now on the forward time frame, we once again have this uh, structure break right there stemming from this lower high supply. And that's it. So once again, exactly the same as the NZD. We can start bearish, take out that low. And then from there, we're going to see if we're going to continue going lower or if we're going to be taking the low and then aligning bullish and maybe starting like a daily pullback. And then to potentially start going short or if the market decides to open bullish. Then, of course, we have to wait for like lower time frame alignments from here and then potentially try to go short. So those are once again the, the three outcomes that I see exactly the same as the uh, as the NZD USD. So nicely correlated. They pretty much move in a similar manner. But because it's a JPY pair, I would definitely advise you to be trading the USD pair because again, USD pairs are right now much cleaner. Why? Because of what I'm about to show you next. So here is USDJPY, which is absolutely tricky once again, and there is no difference. So weekly candle didn't do really much. Daily high to daily low, which is the same as the hourly high to low, which is the same as the one minute high to low. So all you're trading inside here is internal structure. So don't be drawing any 15 minute breaks up and breaks down because that is your 15 minute high and that is your 15 minute low. So everything you draw is going to be internal and you can pretty much see that 
I mean, just look at this, right? It, it, this is not tradable. This is just a very, very, very big consolidation. And you're most likely going to be losing money if you try to trade the, the J, USD JPY. And you can see we're having once again interventions. Massive spike lower right there. Another massive spike lower right there, right? You can see it like spiking here, but that is uh, the Fed speaking. So I just say watch out and uh, don't trade this uh, USD JPY pair until it gets cleaner, until it either breaks the high or it either breaks the low. I do think it's first going to take out the high uh, because it's very close to it. I just don't think it's going to massively flush from here. But who am, I, who am I to be thinking and knowing? I don't know. So again, guys, don't trade USD JPY because it's extremely choppy. And you're just going to get um, uh, losses right there and you're going to get very confused. So trade what is clear. Let's have a look at the pound pairs starting from GU. Now on the weekly time frame, you can see once again for four weeks right there, uh, there is no clear movements. So it's cooking for something. Is it accumulating for a push up? Is it accumulating for a push down? Again, we do not know. And again, we can try to read it. We can try to force it, but... We're just getting chopped inside like a very nice range right there. So again, this week, Monday, moved very nice. And then, of course, we have Tuesday and Wednesday sitting inside Monday's price action. And then Thursday and Friday just doing nonsense. So once again, if we just break it down, the daily time frame actually aligned bullish. That is the daily higher low formation. And the market tapped inside the daily higher low formation and actually reacted from it. So are we going to turn bullish from that daily higher low? I don't know. Forward time frame was actually bearish all the time. So that was the forward supply zone. But again, it came in once, it came in twice, it came in three times, and it had all very big internal ranges also on the lower time frame. So it was very not clear to be trading this pair. Then we came in, we broke the low right there on the foyage. We tapped inside that daily zone and we immediately pulled back towards tapping this brand new forward lower high. We tapped in, we tried to push lower. We didn't make a new forward break of structure lower and right now we are coming back towards that supply. So absolutely tr tricky. Uh, but again, this high, if the market doesn't flush from here, this high is going to be liquidity. And I see this as a potential scenario, which is the bearish scenario. I see this as a bearish scenario. And then, of course, if the market actually pumps up, uh, then, of course, we're just going to have to start seeing how the longs are going to play out because we're tapping inside the daily demand zone. So is this going to cause a reversal? Well, again, that depends on the news. That depends on how the euro is going to go. And uh, I'm not sure if we had any GBP news. Uh, we, no, not really. No, just on Tuesday we had, yeah, on Tuesday, but this is just composite manufacturing PMI sort of stuff. So not very important. So again, I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen on this one. It has been very, 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 very tricky. Ranges like that. Tuesday, very tricky. Wednesday, very tricky. Thursday, very, very, very tricky during the speech. And Friday, also a little bit of nonsense right there. So very, very, very tricky. Again, guys, wait for clear markets. And if the market is indecisive, and, and again, to me, like very important for myself, just the lesson of this week is when the market doesn't make sense, when the hard time frame doesn't make sense, and when your gut is just telling you, I, I don't know what's happening, then just don't trade. Don't show up because, again, I keep showing up. I keep looking at the charts. I keep finding setups that kind of align with my plan, but not entirely. Uh, but luckily, I didn't take... I probably took only one trade on, on GU uh, because the majority of my losses are in the indices. So, yeah, that is GU. That is how it looks like right now. I really don't want to say whether long or short because forward is bearish, but daily is bullish. Uh, so, I really want to see if I want to go long. I really want to see the forward time frame turn bullish because that is going to give me all the confidence that... Huawei has aligned with the daily and then we can start going long. If this doesn't happen, then of course I'm going to follow the 4H, which is short, which is also low probability because that is going against the daily. So again, let's wait and see. GJ being a JPY pair, it will be confusing because we're having a weekly bullish time frame. So again, higher low, higher high, too higher low, already very nicely pulled back. Daily time frame is tricky. Then you drop to the daily time frame and you have this bullish break a structure right there but then it really depends whether you take this as your higher low because if you take this one which i do think it's valid according to me then it wicks it down the rejects back up and right now it like yeah pretty much this week it's i don't know just nonsense right then it dropped to the forward time frame potentially to make a little bit more sense so here on the foyage we technically had a breakdown on the foyage that also caused like this daily wick break 
But then we can see after this week break, we have a week break back to the upside. And then after this, we have a very small, 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 small week out right there. And if you take that as a week out and a break of structure, then there is your bearish break of structure. And then currently that is your supply zone. The market tapped inside supply, reacted, but failed to take out the low. And right now, similar to Jew, it's coming back towards that supply. So that should be liquidity. So again, what I'm going to say is that we can potentially take this liquidity similar to GU, align bearish and go down. We can flush from here. Second outcome and third outcome is to shift bullish. And then we're going to see whether we can take any long longs if we align bullish on the foage. So like daily time frame, when you're confused, once again, just don't trade because the daily time frame, I don't know, is it bearish? Is it bullish? It really depends uh, whether you take this as your higher low. Because if you take all the way down there, you can see the market hasn't even yet pulled back to the 50%. There is no imbalance below the 50%. And yeah, this week was complete chop. So once again, give it some time and work with the foliage. Because the foliage is always going to be clear and it's always going to give you like clear signs about what is going on. But then even if the foil is confusing, that is the one of the cleanest signals to just not trade. Right now, according to me, it's bearish. That is our supply zone. So let's see how it reacts from here if it gives us any shorts or if it decides to reverse. All right, so we have at least one instrument that is moving very aggressively and that is gold. So right now gold is massively pumping higher while the DXY is not massively pumping lower. But again, if gold actually continues to go like this, that could also mean that the Dixie should start falling. If there is any sort of correlation in the markets, which uh, doesn't exist right now, <laughs> but we're actually having this weekly break of structure right now which doesn't indeed uh, tell us that the market is shifting bullish on the weekly time frame. Because if you take these here, like a breakup, a breakup, a breakdown, down, down, down. And then right now, this is the last, I mean, structural formation. So it's broken to the upside. Now, there is a lot of imbalance being left. And of course, that we know is driven by war because uh, gold is being used as a um, means of uh, payment. As far as I, as far as I know, it's a safe haven currency as well. And like there are stuff going on right now uh, within the, um, the conflict that we have ongoing and that is pretty much benefiting the price action of gold. We're having this uh, little demand zone on the daily right there and the time timeframe is uh, extremely bullish. So whoever is trading gold right now should be pretty good. The only mistake you could be doing on gold right now is trying to catch the top. So don't try to catch the top. The market is just massively imposing higher. So most likely uh, breakout traders, because I know uh, gold is traded by a lot of breakout traders and momentum traders. So you see like a nice push up, you just buy at the hard high and you just keep trailing it. Uh, that is working great right now. So currently that is our most recent hourly range. And here is our most recent daily range. So again, which one is going to get respected? Both are very good. Both are very good. There is like the demand zone within the hourly zone. Uh, sorry, the hourly zone within the daily zone. So those are all areas of interest from which we can potentially long. However, what you see is the market never pulls back to 50%. Well, not never, but like first it imposed very little pullback. Then here it pulled back to 50%. Massive impulse, no 50%, or maybe it did. Yeah, it actually did. Then a massive push, no 50%. Massive push, no 50%. Massive push. Maybe once again, we're not going to tap the 50%. So I'm going to be releasing a video on PD ranges next week. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, there are some nice lessons in there. So you got to learn the behavior of your pair. So right now the market can just open and it can just pop up, right? And then it just keep following it to the upside. Or of course, the market can decide to pull back a little bit lower, give us a bullish alignment on the lower time frames, and then potentially continue going higher. So do not try to catch the top. So don't try to say, oh, like a high stake into the left. I'm going to go short. Yes, you could do that uh, because, yeah, this is pretty much like old liquidity, old highs being taken to the left and the market is going to give you a reaction. But you can see the reaction is usually just a very brief pullback and then the market continues going higher. So it's much better to wait for the market to align bullish so it can actually take along with the trend rather than trying to catch the top. So don't make this mistake. Let's have a look at indices starting from US 30. So right now we're having a very nice actually engulfing candle with a very nice wick on top. So that is a very powerful bearish formation. So again, if, if I am asked what could be the price action next week, I would say bearish. And first of all, this low could be targeted. And second of all, this low could be targeted. So let's see how we could get in. 
Now on the daily time frame, we did have a very brief daily bullish alignment here and then we have a daily uh, bullish break here and then right now the daily has aligned bearish. Uh, we, and then of course that is our daily supply. So we are definitely bearish on the daily and you can see four consecutive bearish days, right? However, when it comes to intraday, it was absolutely impossible to catch a short, right? Absolutely impossible. And I tried to short it uh, and all I got is stop losses this week. So yeah, it is what it is. And again, I decided not to share the trades because I, again, you don't learn anything from them. But I took, again, I, I took five losses this week and probably three were on US 30, two were on NASDAQ and I don't know, something like that. So right now, in terms of the quality time frame, it is very tricky. Because according to me, this here is not a valid break of structure. So technically, the, oh, the quality high is all the way up there. Uh, but you could make an exception to potentially take this as your lower high. But again, the market is very low right now. So it could do a lot of things. And again, as I say, when the market is massively impulsing like this, do not wait for like big pullbacks. All we, we need is like a, a little pullback right there. And then we can potentially continue going lower, which is what I would potentially expect next week. Now... We are tapping inside a demand zone. So that is the demand zone we're tapping inside. So this is why I think we could have a pullback. But again, don't make the mistake to try to go long because I think I made this mistake on uh, here. So that is one of the trades I took this week from here. A long trade, reacted, pullback, reacted, and then hit stop. So again, why would you try to catch the top, the, the bottom, right? Well, again, because it was a setup according to me. Farly lower low. Asian low take and liquidity to the left take and right a very nice bullish alignment but that bullish alignment also took out the Asian high and I was potentially looking for that pullback the market tried but then it hit stop loss then I was try tried to short from here but it was absolutely insane on the lower time frames and it went lower so right now we are very low and again the question is what is going to happen what I'm going to say is don't try to catch the bottom just wait for some sort of a pullback lower high and then we're going to be targeting potentially this day the daily low so let me know how you perform this week on indices. Let me know if you took some losses so I know that I'm not alone. Uh, but that is my US 30 outlook. Let's have a look at the others. Let's have a look at NASDAQ, which was also pretty tough this week. But actually looking at the structure right now, it hopefully looks like it wants to drop. So we had three weeks of a pullback. And right now the fourth week is printing a very sharp bearish engulfing candle. And once again, our first target will be the weekly lower low right there. And then, of course, the second one I see is most likely these lows right there. We have, oops, a little bit of imbalance here to potentially target. So, of course, that is speaking way ahead of time. Now, when it comes to the daily time frame, what I don't like about it, well, not that I don't like it, it's just very clear it actually wants to go bearish. Uh, no, it's in fact, yeah, in fact, it's still bearish and all the way towards this lower high so our bias is playing out to perfection so again why would i well no i actually did try to take a couple of shorts but once again it was very unclear because according to me this is not a structure break right there so technically not a lower high and this is not a lower high so the the daily higher lower high was from this high to this low so that is our daily range so the market was bearish on the daily it pulled back all the way up to the daily supply to fill in this little imbalance right there okay look at that perfect right and then of course the market just started running that uh the sales but then of course it dropped to the 40 time frame and like even the lower time frames and it was very 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 tricky and up and down and up and down and chop around and like new york stock exchange was very very choppy uh but still like i do believe the break of structure came in somewhere here then we have like a week out then it broke down then it pulls back lower high so there was actually a short trade right there but again i don't know why the macro bias made a lot of sense but uh somehow on the lower time frames it was pretty tough so they're like structure break after structure break this here according to me is not a valid lower high and this here to me is also not a valid one as well so we're still staying within uh which should be like this guy right there this big guy so i would take this as my forward lower high formation right now but again as i say uh, i would just be looking for a brief pullback and in fact i could just also take this one not a valid range according to me, but a valid pullback uh, zone. And we are most likely going to be taking out this low. So what I would love to see is for it to take out the low, pull back, and then give us a short. Or of course, like don't even wait for a, such a big pullback like this. Just wait for like a brief pullback like that. And then potentially for the market to go down. So 
Bearish Nasdaq, uh, I don't think we should be looking for something else uh, on, the, on the indices right now. Very bearish. We are also in an earning season right now and the market is dropping. But the only kind of toughness we have right now and like why we're seeing price action like this and price action like this is all the uncertainty going on. Okay, so again, be very careful. Wait for high probability setups and preferably trade with the trend, which is right now bearish. So that is Nasdaq. Again, I don't know how it's going to play out. So again, we got to be flowing with the market. Last but not least, we have SPX, which is also having a very beautiful bearish candle. So as I told you a couple of weeks ago, my projection is 4140, uh, which is a very specific zone that I have. And yeah, pretty much it's staying also within this uh, sort of demand zone. So this is when, of course, we should start buying stocks. I'm already starting to buy stocks right now because the market is very nice and declining. And it's in a very nice bearish trend. So very simply dropping onto the daily time frame. Well, in terms of the daily... We had a daily bullish alignment here. So then technically that is our oh, from higher low to higher high. But right now, again, you don't want to take a demand zone right there and long from here. I mean, just look at the last three days of price action. But again, there it was very nice short bias, but it was pretty hard to get in. So there we have a break of structure down. Then we had a break of structure up, then a break of structure up. And then the last break of structure down is here. And then since then, we just massively rushed to the downside. So still according to me, that is the last valid hourly lower high but again depending on your rules you can take this one you can also take this one but you can see here all the candles made lower lows so there is no clear pullback right there yes if you go to the line chart you're gonna have a pullback but again that is not valid according to me however that is a valid kind of supply zone from which you can potentially long from so looking forward for like around around let's say 42 so 42 is the next liquidity target because it's exactly at this major low and also below this low right there so how it's gonna play out i don't know but similar to all the other indices i would be looking for a pullback and then potentially a breakdown lower so again like watch at your lower time frames and again if you just actually have a look at it uh at first we had like this very big push up it was staying within this bullish range for quite a while then we like decided to shift down but then it like break down break up break down then on this day was complete madness then on that day also it was wasn't very clean on um, only the only long trade there was was on monday and then again the short trades it keeps falling down but it just according to me like it just chops 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 then it starts dropping all of a sudden right here again chop 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 dropped right then it pulled back and then maybe if you got from here that's good but super hard to get in and once again like you can have the bias right but if you cannot manage to get in if you don't make money on your bias then of course um that's bad right so let's see how it's going to go next week. Indices, they have a very bearish outlook. Let's see. So just to recap, overall, the DXY right now is rather uncertain. We're going to have some news next week. So let's wait to see what is going to happen. I am more bearish than I am bullish, which means that I'm more bullish than bearish on EU. But also EU has interest rate decision next week. We have a lot of euro news as well. So let's wait for it to see what is going to happen. But of course, I have outlined all the potential scenarios. Euro JPY also the same as EU. It has that little bit of a bullishness, but being a JPY pair, I would prefer to trade the Euro. Now the Aussies, they are still trading between the hourly and the daily high and low. They're the same. So again, you gotta wait for potential bearishness. And if you pick a pair, you better pick Aussie USD. It's very close to the lower low. So it's most likely gonna take it first while AJ is still kind of in the middle. NZDs are much bearish than the Aussies. So again, if you actually want the better pair in this situation, it could be the NZD because it's very bearish, but we're having CPI this week on the Aussie. So that might kick in some momentum. Uh, USD JPY, complete skip. GU looks more bearish than bullish, but the daily time frame is bullish. So again, it really depends on the DXY and it just, again, we have to see what is going to happen. Looking at the indices and how they drop, I would expect indices to take with them the Euro and the GBP. But for that, we need to see like the dollar start to increase in value, right? So if uh, money is leaving the indices, it should be going somewhere else. Maybe it's gold right now, but it should respectively also be the dollar. But if, if the interest rates are not hiked next time, that is not going to be the case. So very, very uncertain situation. Very hard to actually read also in terms of the fundamentals. Uh, probably on the GJ, it's bearish. Uh, but again, it's coming back to take this high as liquidity. So again, similar to GU. Let's wait and see how that supply lower high is going to form. Gold, don't try to catch the top. Just keep longing. And when it comes to the indices, they are all massively imposing lower right now. 
So I would look for some sort of a pullback on all of them and then continue to short them to the most recent liquidity targets, which I have outlined on my charts. Uh, cryptos as well, uh, we see like Bitcoin starting to react very nicely from that uh, demand zone right there. It went from 25 all the way to 30, uh, which is uh, a rather nice increase. So if you're holding Bitcoin, very good. But again, not really interested in that right now. So that's for me. I uh, really hope you had an amazing week. Uh, if you didn't, again, don't panic. It's it's for all of the for, for all of us. It's like that. Let me know down in the comments. How did you actually perform this week? What did you learn and what and pretty much how do you feel about this week? And I wish you an incredible week ahead of you. Again, trade safe, follow the plan. And again, always risk manage well, because in tough periods like this, the only thing that is going to save you is risk management. So with that being said, talk to you on Tuesday.